next graphics so tough to understand this. Okay, so uh, when when we started the company uh, 15 years ago, uh, I look into what we're going to do, what kind of products we're going to build, and one of the areas that we look into is uh, the uh, the process uh, this processor space. And uh, what I found out that uh, there were a number of uh, companies uh, looking into uh, into uh, addressing microprocessors for the uh, PC uh, desktop replacements. Uh, there were battles between Sys and RIS processors uh, starting in the late 80s, uh, and then the battles the battles become uh, heated up uh, uh, in the late 90s. And you, 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 I guess you all see, the, you all saw the, uh, the battles between uh, PowerPC, MIPS, uh, Sparks, and other proprietaries, uh, uh, there are other unique risk processors in the markets. And uh, one of the things that I noticed is that everyone in the industries were trying to build a microprocessors uh, basically to, uh, to replace uh, PC processors. Uh, it's... Uh, people get carry on to uh, people get so carry on about this uh, this risk and sys battle that they forgot that uh, along the way Intel uh, in the x86 have moved on to build their uh, sys processor to use uh, risk architectures as well. So as a result, uh, as well as for many other different reasons, uh, those those battles uh, 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 those battles are, are won by by Intel. And along the way, there's only one. Risk, one risk uh, architectures that's called ARM. You look at the bottom. That is uh, not noticed by anybody in the world. Uh, it's just too small. ARM was building a risk processor uh, specifically to address very low end, very low power, uh, very uh, low gate counts applications. And that application name was uh, cell phones. And cell phones at the time, so the only thing you need is just to push the buttons, the numbers, and uh, maybe a list of phone numbers and to either stop or make a phone call, that's it. So you don't need many more, much more than like 15, 20 megahertz of performance. Uh, so uh, so when I look at this, okay, I, I realized that uh, right around 10 years ago, I realized even though this processor called ARM is it is uh, so underpowered. It has it has a chance to become the next generation. It become the next successful uh, uh, microprocessor architecture uh, uh, in the world. Uh, while everybody else, while the PowerPC and MIPS fail to displace, to 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 enter, to enter in a big way into the into this semiconductor industry, I felt that ARM has a ch has a chance because ARM is low key at the time, where we really flying under the radar screen of all these other companies. So they, have a, they will have a chance to enter to this market with <clears throat> where the volume is going to be very high, very high and establish their positions uh, through, through volume. And uh, at the same time, that I also realized that uh, fundamentally there's no reasons why ARM could not scale into high performance regime. Uh, after all, ARM is yet another is, is, is also a risk processor. Uh, fundamentally, there is no reason why ARM cannot improve performance as most law scales. Uh, fundamentally, there's no reason why we cannot increase the let's say the the number of issues that the ARM processor can uh, execute on a given cycle. Fundamentally, there's no reason why we cannot put a floating point engines into the ARM processor. Uh, fundamentally, there's no reason why we cannot put uh, media uh, instructions into the ARM processor. And fundamentally, there's no reason why we cannot increase the pipeline status to increase the number, uh, the number, the number of, I mean, the clock frequencies, and so on and on. So, as Moore's law scales, we 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 saw an opportunity that ARM could be. The, the uh, could could be the next could, could imp okay, we could increase the performance of this processor to beyond what okay the traditional ARM markets. So and as a result of that, we uh, Marvell has decided at the time 
right around 10 years ago, to dive in and to basically focus on developing all of our chips using ARM processor, but at the higher performance uh, end. So uh, infrastructure, the low power uh, uh, cloud computing types, cloud server types applications. Uh, so this one has a, uh, also a very large uh, L2 cache, uh, two megabytes. It has a lot of interfaces, a lot of gigabits, ethernet interfaces, it has lots of PCIe interfaces. Just a, basically it's a general purpose uh, uh, low power computing uh, applications. Uh, again, so this is utilizing the uh, ARM uh, vCell instruction sets. Uh, uh, and if, if you look at it, it's, so then it's not just about the phones, but everything else is that is going to be smart. Uh, that including TV. TVs, if you look at the last 50, 60 years, we started with what? Uh, black and white TVs, moving to bigger black and whites, and then moving to color CRT TVs, and then moving to bigger CRT TVs, moving to plasma LCDs. But along the way, nothing. Okay, one thing has not changed. Okay? The, the the TVs are still dumb. Okay? It still can only do change the channel, can only do increase the volume. Okay? The, okay, the only thing can do is the only thing you can do with the TV is just to do the, the same things as what you have done in the last. 20, 30 years, okay, except this time it comes with remote controls, with the biggest, biggest screens. Uh, so I see that alone, okay, with, the, with the advancements of these uh, smartphones, tablets, powerful processors, powerful graphics, powerful uh, uh, video processing, powerful audio, HD processing, integrated into single device. There's no reason why all these TVs will not be uh, smart TVs. Okay, again, the only difference will be having a dumb TV versus a smart TV will be instead of spending $1,000 for these nice large TVs, now you have to spend $1,025. And maybe you don't even have to pay that much more money because the one that is going to integrate these smart capabilities to the TVs will get the free advertisement in the market because the market wants to promote the news they want to promote the, 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 the new stuff. They don't want to promote the old stuff. So if you only want to build TVs that are dumb, okay, you have to promote your dumb TV yourself. Okay, and you have to pay for that. And you have to spend a lot more money than spending another $10 or so, $5 or $10 on the, on, on the TV to make the TVs to be smart. So the way I see it, all the TVs are going to be smart. Okay, they're going to be 300 plus million units of TVs, they're going to be all smart capabilities. There are going to be people there who will, will, will be so accustomed to the tap, uh, to smartphones, there'll be like a billion of those people, and more than, okay, billions of these people that having, they will have smartphones on their, on their, on their hand, and they have to, a, a, a good percentage of those people is going to say, hey, this this device is too small, I mean, screen too small, I need a bigger screen. So let's say just only 25% or 30% of those people wants to have a bigger screen, so they're going to buy a device that calls tablets, and because the tablets that they, uh, have the same look and feel as, as smartphones, and it has the same guts engines as the smartphones. So uh, even if 25 to 30% of the people are buying those companion devices that call tablets, we're still talking about 500 plus million units of tablets are going to be produced on a yearly basis. So it's going to be a huge volume driver for, 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 for ARM uh, processor that comes with an ARM, uh, uh, devices that comes with ARM processors. Uh, 